Hey, what's up guys? It's me again here with the standard range 2023 Model Y Austin built all-wheel drive 4680 cells. Oh my gosh, it's such a mouthful. Um, I know that the recent uh, price breaks again. I think this is now $3,000 lower than what I bought it for, but it's okay. I don't mind because I had to really get it uh, due to a timing issue. Um, I would have waited otherwise, so congrats to you guys who are buying this now at even at an even cheaper price. So hey, pretty fitting, right? Made in the USA. That's awesome. Um, I'm here in a commercial industrial park because the wind is blowing hard, so hopefully I found a little nook here where it's kind of um, isolated from the wind. Anyway, this is going to be a short video again and trying to just dispel some of the rumors, myths, and, and incorrect information out there about this particular build, because um, I know that uh, it's been pretty widely researched at the moment, and there isn't really that much information about it, or the information that's out there is a bit confusing. Just imagine when I was shopping for this in January, and, and basically, um, at least now Tesla has it on their website with, with bits more with a little bit more information. So anyway, I'm just gonna go through a few things here real quickly. The first one, this does not have hardware four. Alright, so hardware four from what I can tell is only gonna be available on the new Model S's, uh, maybe the X's, and certainly only on the Model 3, the new revamp, which is the uh, Highland version. So anyway. Um, I am not yet aware if any of the Model Ys that's shipping anytime soon will come with the hardware for. That's probably TBD, all right? So the other big one is just because this is the standard range, the lowest model, the cheapest Model Y you can currently buy from Tesla, it is not the same battery chemistry as the Model 3 standard range, which is an LFP chemistry battery pack um, made by CATL and they're basically out of China. So at the moment, Tesla does not have a battery factory that can produce an LFP battery pack. So just because it's a 4680, do not confuse that as an LFP. The 4680 has the exact same battery chemistry as the 2170 cells that come out of your long range and your performance versions. So this one, this particular Model Y, it's the same, you know, don't charge it to 100% all the time. I mean, I do, but I quickly discharge it because it's, you know, I do long trips and stuff. So you don't want to let it sit at a high state of charge for any long periods of time. Um, unlike the LFP battery pack, which Tesla actually suggests you can charge it up to 100% at least once a week. So the next one, um, the next kind of myth is that this 2023 has softer suspension. And that's kind of a yes and a no answer. The quick answer is it actually has um, the exact same dampers and springs. So it has the same shocks and the same springs as the 2022 and earlier uh, model Ys. So I should say the long range version. I'm not sure about the performance, but I certainly know that the long range has the same dampers and springs as this. What it does have different though, is up here somewhere, there's a spring pad up on the top and somewhere on the bottom of the spring where it, where it sits on, the spring pad itself is thicker. So the rubber piece that isolates the spring to the chassis is slightly thicker. So what that means is your NVH, which is noise, vibration, and harshness, will be much more muted and it will be just kind of quieter and a little bit more comfortable from that perspective. The dampers on this car are actually pretty good. Um, it took me a while to realize that, but after you know driving it aggressively and accidentally hitting big potholes and uh, here in California we have those storm drain kind of dips which can be fairly crashy or slightly violent if your damping can't absorb it. It's probably one of the best damped cars that I've ever owned for those situations that doesn't have a high-end, you know, Olin's or JRZ or KW style damper. So pretty impressed with that. The trade-off though is for small bumps and um, inconsistent like freeway transitions and kind of undulations. It's very firm. So the high speed damping on this car is very firm. So you feel that like all over. 
But overall, the big hits, the big bumps, it takes it very, very well. So there's always going to be a compromise with these um, kind of OEM mass production dampers. Uh, you're not going to get those, you know, a good ride and a sporty, ha a sporty handling on suspension systems that aren't um, adjustable from the factory. So I think they found a good compromise. Uh, I would like it to be a little bit softer if I had the choice, but you know, you sacrifice some of the sportiness. So whatever floats your boat, if you like them kind of sporty, and I've said this before in other videos of this car, this is more akin to like an, a BMW M Sport or BMW M or a Mercedes AMG, a Black Series type, those real stiff uh, handling oriented suspension. So the next one I want to inform everyone about is the charging speeds. So the charging speeds on this car, on the 4680 cells, it's a little bit slower than I'd like. It's not, I've noticed it not being as fast as um, the long range, uh, 2170 cells. And I'm not sure if that's just because they're being, uh, Tesla's being a little bit conservative on the charging rates that they're making available for this car or if it's really just the battery chemistry can't handle uh, that, that much of a charge speed and maybe it goes into thermal overload quicker or something like that. But anyway, for the most part, from 10% to say 80%, you're gonna first plug it in and it's, go and I have a video that shows this better, so just look back, probably the last most recent video shows the full charging curve of my experience with this car. But you'll start out around, you know, 190, 200, but only for a brief moment, it quickly just, dives down to much slower uh, after that. So you'll go to 190, then 100, then 80, and it'll probably cruise around at 80 for a while, and then it'll, it'll, it'll eventually start stabilizing at around 50 to 30 kilowatts until it gets to a much higher state of charge. So I don't want to explain that here. It'll make more sense if you watch the other video. The build quality. The build quality on this is pretty good. Um, you can see here that the panel gaps, I have never taken this into Tesla. Um, the panel gaps are really quite acceptable. Actually, they're pretty good, to be honest. Uh, I don't have a lifting hood. Nothing is particularly out of spec. Um, the doors close just fine. The only thing that might be a little bit out of spec is you can see that this door could possibly be pushed back a little bit more towards me because this side, it's pretty good. But do I care? As long as it closes right and it doesn't cause any issues, um, I'm fine with it. So I don't want to mess with it at the moment since it seems to be closing right. And once I mess with this, it's going to mess with this. It's just kind of this domino effect and it'll probably mess with the alignment up there. So this might be the best we can do for now. And I'm not worried about it. The only kind of random build quality issue, and I mentioned this in another video, is there is a little bit of a tiny low frequency squeak somewhere around here or somewhere in this back seat so i think if it bothers me enough i'll probably take it in but right now it's kind of not worth my time to be without the car and have to wait on them etc phantom braking is the next item phantom braking i haven't really had an issue with phantom braking um other tesla uh, owners friends etc have complained about phantom braking but it does have a tendency to break hard once in a while, but I wouldn't consider that phantom braking. I think it was just a computer being ultra conservative and not wanting to, you know, run into the car ahead of me or whatever, even though as a human, I would have not braked that hard. Um, but it's certainly not like a random occurrence where it just all of a sudden wants to break on you because it sees a shadow of something or whatever. So haven't experienced phantom braking really at all. Um, the range. Now, let me get in the car. Let me turn this down. Okay. There's one thing I want to mention in terms of the range. So right now I'm at 63%, right? And it says I have 175 miles of range. Now, I never, I've learned not to trust that number. And it's actually the same one down here. This, I, I did a video, small, small video on that. Anyway, if you really want to know what your your estimated range will be, um, go to the consumption tab under the energy uh, icon. And your, your best estimated range is probably that number right there. So I have 147 miles 
based on my current average driving style, this is going to get me 147 miles off of the 62% of range I have left. That's probably the better way to look at it. This is this 174 is really based on the EPA estimate, and I just irritates me why Tesla still continues to use that. I don't know why when this is a much better number and I wish that number would be up there because it's much easier for me to manage my leftover range when I see it up there than to go to this screen that shows my consumption. So Rivian actually has this whole thing in a small little section over there because they know it's much more important to, to see that than it is to see some bogus average here which I just really use 62%. Um, now if you do drive let's say I don't know 70 to 80 percent and this is just my own personal estimate this is not a scientific study but if you drive between 70 to 80 percent on the streets with a lot of regen then you'll probably make this or better this particular estimate but right now i do a lot of freeway driving so it's gonna cut that much shorter you can just see what my total average my total average so far so right now i have not reset this since new i now have almost 4,000 miles, 30, 3,800 or so, and I'm averaging just under 300 watts per mile. Um, so, you know, that's, I, I would say that's pretty good for the kind of high speed driving that I do most of the time. Uh, one more thing, this is a minor one, but cruise control in this car is not the same as obviously the cruise control in most other cars. And what I mean by that, I'm not talking about the adaptive the ADAS systems or the autopilot, etc. But you know, in a normal cruise control car, most of them have a set function, a cancel function, and a resume function, right? So you resume means you click it and you'll resume to your last known um, uh, set speed for cruise control when you last turned it on. Well, this doesn't have that. This has a kind of, when you set it to autopilot or you set it to cruise control, cruise control, it will, go to a default setting that is like 10 miles an hour 10 miles per hour above the current speedometer or the current uh, uh speed limits i should say so that that 10 miles per hour over is adjustable in the menu here i forgot where it is but you can adjust it from either zero to 10 miles per hour over so if you like it to just be like five miles per hour over every time you engage autopilot then if the the speed limit is 65 then it'll go to 70 and it'll always track to 70. so there's some limits and there's some limitations like it only goes up to 85 miles an hour um uh but it'll only go to 10 miles per hour over the speed limit and if you want to go to 85 miles an hour you have to manually like do the scrolling of the wheel this way and it'll get you to 85 miles an hour but if you exceed 85 miles an hour and you're in autopilot, it actually disables autopilot for the rest of your drive. It's like happened to me twice and I'm like, what the heck? Um, anyway, there's some quirks with autopilot, but on the balance, uh, basically, I think it's better than, than, nor than actual regular autopilot um, in terms of how the resume and the, the, the preset speed functions work. So Tesla has these... Um, wireless charging pads on both sides here I found myself not really using them because I think in most cases I, I run a lot of Bluetooth music from my phone and just that transmission is causing the phone to get hot and whenever I put the phone here and try to charge I have a, a pixel pixel 6 phone fairly new phone not the newest um, I tend to use a little bit more power than it's charging because it'll start to like thermal overload and it'll, the phone just gets hot and it stops charging uh, inductively through the wireless the wireless pad so what I've done instead is you know I just use a charge cable and I, I place my phone here and I charge it that way um, let's see here uh, the seat comfort the seat when people say it's a really super comfortable seat, I think they're mostly right. I can't, the, the, the padding itself, it's very soft and the initial like one half inch press and it firms up real, real, real well for um, that kind of supportive uh, feel. Now, the only thing is I can't quite get the seat low enough. So when I'm looking, I'm kind of looking, you know, more at this thing. 
um, I'd like it for I'd like it to be like a little bit lower so this would be like perfect eye level and I'm currently at sort of this eye level right now so anyway minor minor complaints and one last thing I'll mention um, just to give you guys an idea I'm not gonna uh, show you this screen because it may have some information on here that might cause someone to um, I don't know uh, hack into it or whatever but anyway I'll go through this list of additional vehicle information, okay? So this does have, oh, I'm sorry guys, it's probably too loud here. Let me just turn this off. Okay, sorry about that. Um, where was it? Software, vehicle, vehicle information. Okay, so this does have the premium sound system. That's default, uh, the all-wheel drive. The cheapest model Y you can buy comes with a premium sound system. The autopilot computer is uh, capable of the full self-driving. It's CCS support, so DC fast chargers that are non-Tesla based is supported in this car as long as you get the adapter. Um, I'll show you the adapter that I got and kind of a cool little spot that I found. It fits just in this back door. Obviously, the charge port is right there. In this back door here, I found a little, it's like fits perfectly. This triangular shape sort of fits in there nicely and that's its own resting point so that's a tesla charger but they have other ones in my opinion the price difference is minuscule so might as well just uh buy the tesla one um this is on the amd ryzen not the intel chip so this is on the newest chip again the battery here is lithium ion so it's not the lfp not the lithium iron phosphate one it's a lithium ion nickel something something uh, it does have the front, since this is all-wheel drive, the front's an induction motor and the rear is a permanent magnet motor. But that's kind of all the basics. Hopefully that helps answer some of the questions about this car. And um, if you have any questions that I have not speaked about, then post them in the comments below and uh, I'll try to get to them. All right, guys, have a great day. Take care. Bye now.